was, what I heard from him, and I don't mean in his voice or his delivery, I always liked the guy, because I happen to like, what, what's the word I'm looking for? I like over-the-top people who are really smart. I like people who are bold enough to just get out there and say it. Uh, if you got it flaunted kind of thing, let's put it to you that way. And he's really got it. So I heard him say things that I said, wait, they sound eerily familiar to me. And then I looked at um, Stop the Coming Civil War and many of my bullet points for what should be done uh, were identical. Identical. And then I, uh, I wrote the new one. Came out in October, big bestseller, Government Zero, my 40 points to save America. I hear it echoed in Donald Trump. And sometimes I have to ask myself, is he echoing what's in my book because his staff read it, recorded it, and fed it to him? And I have to say no, <clears throat> because I think it's what he really believes. I don't think he needs any lieutenants to tell him what makes common, you know, common sense. It's that simple. So... That's why I like Trump. No, no other personal reason. I, I like his salad bar at Mar-a-Lago, but I haven't been there in over a year. I went there in 2015 for Christmas Eve, and I haven't been that. I haven't been there in all of the rest of the year. I've been there in Florida once this year. Would you believe that? It's not like we're buddies. That picture of me and Donald with my dog Teddy on MichaelSavage.com was taken, I think, that Christmas Eve or two years before that, when I still look good. I went downhill pretty fast in the last two years. <laughs> no, I was still looking good. So what's the breaking news, Robert? There's something happening. The market's collapsing, like Hillary's campaign. The market's falling faster than Hillary's campaign is. You know, if she's indicted, what are we going to have? Let's see. Oh, well, let me see how I figure this out. If she's actually indicted by the FBI, uh, let's see. It's Trump versus Colonel Sanders' illegitimate relative? Are you joking? You know, I'll say it again. If it's a vote between a very successful, brash New York billionaire named Donald Trump and some down-in-the-mouth ILGWU union organizer who spittles on himself, communist, and I'll call him what he is, never mind socialist, he's a lifetime communist, Bernie Sanders, it's a 90 to 10. The unions will bolt away from Dirty, uh, Dirty Sanders. The illegal aliens will bolt away from Dirty Sanders. The minorities will bolt away from Dirty Sanders. Back in a minute. There's a lot of people who love Trump, and then there are people who are a little afraid of him. They have one girl, Barbara, saying Trump sounds like a real commander-in-chief. Uh, Randy in Pennsylvania saying Trump would be more of a king than a president. I kind of like that, both of those things. You know, last night I had my friend over, Doc, I told you, Green Beret, Five Wars. I'm helping him get his book published because I respect him so much. Medic with a sniper team in, in Iraq in, in the area of the... Sunni Triangle in 2005. I said, wasn't that the birthplace of the of ISIS? He said, yes. So the worst people on earth, he faced down. One of the nicest guys I know. So I'm sitting here at my desk last night before the debate, and my poor assistant, Ryan, I asked him to get something, and I, I don't talk to people. I bark orders. So Doc laughed, and he said to Ryan, he said, don't take it personally. He said, he's a four-star general. He said, that's how four-star generals talk. He said, you're his lieutenant. He said, and you're a darn good lieutenant. He said, but Michael's a four-star general. He said, that's the way he talks. That's the way they talk. I really like that. It helped me understand myself better. The only one I don't do that to is Teddy, because I think even four-star generals need mascots. Anyway, folks, it's a great time to be a conservative who believes in borders, language, and culture in America. Is it not? More when I return. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Yeah, 
lock people away from a run around Sue. Yeah, I never listened to the lyrics of this song. I have no idea what the lyrics meant. I guess there was some truth in some of these songs. Who knows? But the thing is this. We already touched on the New York values issue that went on last night and Cruz got knocked out of the ring. I'm a boxing fan. I'm not a boxer. I love sports like that. I like martial sports of any kind. I like brutal sports because it's pretty clear uh, when someone wins in a brutal sport. And politics is a brutal sport. Cruz got beaten. He went at Trump. He threw a hook. He missed. And uh, Trump knocked him out of the ring on the issue of the New York values. Then there was the issue last night. And don't get me wrong. I think Cruz is a great man. I think he's a smart man. I think he's a great constitutional scholar. And I'd love to see Cruz running the Justice Department, by the way. I'd like to see Ted Cruz on the U.S. Supreme Court, by the way. Don't think I'm running him down saying he's not valuable to this country. Please don't get me wrong. But I'm a realist. If I'm anything, I'm a realist. Trump can beat Hillary and the machine. Cruz cannot beat Hillary and the machine. End of story. But we have to go into what happened last night after the New York values issue, which we covered, as I said. There was right off the bat the mortadella with eyes, Cavuto, uh, set them up against each other on the birth issue. And to his eternal shame, Neil shouldn't have done that. I'm sure Neil is a nice man, but Neil is not that bright. A nice guy who's not bright is a very dangerous man because his controllers set him up for these kind of things. And they wrote the question. I said, I was reading the script. Did you see him looking down? Did you see Cavuto looking at his papers? He literally had to read it like he running his finger over the lines to set them up, word by word. So he goes and sets them up on the birth issue. And then Cruz comes back about the birth issue in clip three, which we're going to play now on the Savage Nation. You know, back in September, uh, my friend Donald said that he had had his lawyers look at this from every which way. And there was no issue there. There was nothing to this birther issue. Now... Since September, the Constitution hasn't changed. <laughs> but the poll numbers have. And I recognize, I recognize that Donald is dismayed that his poll numbers are falling in Iowa. But the facts and the law here are really quite clear. Under long-standing U.S. law, the child of a U.S. citizen born abroad is a natural born citizen. If a soldier has a child abroad, that child is a natural born citizen. That's why John McCain, even though he was born in Panama, was eligible to run for president. If an American missionary has a child abroad, that child is a natural born citizen. That's why George Romney, Mitt's dad, was eligible to run for president even though he was born in Mexico. That, that's the end of the story. It's over. He did a beautiful job, and that's what I like about Cruz. He's specific in his answers. He is our super articulate in his answers he's infallibly correct in what he just said i'm really angry though at, at, at cavuto for making this the big issue instead of the issues that are so darn important to us and then uh i'm also very proud to be a conservative who's been at the front of the uh, sled dog pack for so many years with ideas on borders language and culture which were quite unfashionable until Trump came along, came along. And I mean unfashionable not with you, the listener, but unfashionable with the mainstream, let's say, audience. They don't even know what the word borders, they didn't know what the word borders meant. They had no idea. And language, they figured, oh, well, let anyone talk anything they want in a country. It's a free country. That's true, but not in public business and certainly not for voting. If I could advise Donald Trump on that issue, if you can't read and write English, you don't vote in this country. I would, I would change the law. I'd make it what it was intended to be. No ballots can be written in any language other than English. How do you think we wound up with Nancy Pelosi, Dianne Feinstein, and Barbara Boxer since Methuselah uh, was a young man? It's because they rigged the election in San Francisco and they wrote the ballots in seven languages to make certain that the illegal aliens could vote and drive the ordinary American English-speaking taxpayer right out of representation. That's how these Methuselah-like individuals are still in office for 6,000 years. They rigged the election by rechanging the entire meaning of the election, in my opinion. I have to always add in my opinion. Actually, that statement doesn't even need it in my opinion. It's a fact of reality. They wrote the law. The ballots in San Francisco are at least in six languages. 
and they should only be in English. And that's that's something that should happen on a national level, too, on a federal level. Now, I, I don't want to forget the boat story this week because it's changing every day. Iran, the U.S. worked this out in advance, and I believe it was a kabuki dance. First, we were told that they went off course with their GPS. Then they changed the story today to the fact that they were uh, running out of gas, and one of them conked out altogether for mechanical troubles, uh, and then they wound up... Uh, uh, the, the Iranian Navy told them to Farsi Island. It was a big missing point in here. Where was the Navy support ship? The mothership that they came from. Do you remember I raised that the first day? The only one in the media who's a boater? Is there anyone in the media who's a boater? Is anyone in talk radio a boater but me? No, I'm a boater. And I told you right off the bat, where was the mothership? Where were the fast attack helicopters that could have been there in about a minute? Why were they not launched by the great commander of the aircraft carrier? Or, in fact, it's not an aircraft carrier from which they came. My guess is that they were launched from the type of ship that I see during Fleet Week here. Uh, that the Marine Expeditionary Forces are launched from. But the fact is they have attack helicopters on them with some of the finest pilots in the world. They could have flown in there and offered cover and gotten those boats out of there. The whole thing stinks to high heaven. This was an orchestrated event set up by the United States government in cahoots with Iran for reasons that you're going to learn in the next few minutes. Richard, on KSFO, you win the prize. I think you know what happened there. Go ahead, please. Uh, welcome from a steeple in San Francisco. Michael, we're all looking at the left hand while the right hand at the same time this was going on. Ten people were released to get Mo back to Iran at the same time, and they gave us back ten. No different than the Bergdahl fraud. It's a fraud by our government on American people and nothing else. We're looking at the left hand while the right hand is doing something else. We're all... all right, well, for, well, hold on. It happened a few days before the phony in the White House, the actor in the White House, the disgrace in the White House, released... Ten of them from Gitmo, and they were sent not to Iran, but to Onan, believe it or not. Uh, I'm sorry, not Onan. <laughs> Onanism is something else in the Bible, not Onan. A country that sounds like Onan, but it's not Onan. They'll be released back on the battlefield in any case in a very short period of time. So you're saying that Obama orchestrated this to cover that up is what you're basically alleging, right? Yes, sir. That is exactly it. And I come from way back when I was trained by men in the 50s from Korea and World War II. Don't look at the obvious. Look at the backhand of it. And that Well, there's no question that the, that the administration is, is uh, extremely traitorous. But how did they make the boats go, uh, uh, whatever they did, how did they make one conk out? How did they make them go aground? How did they make them captured by Iran? What happened there? Why didn't the boats, because the standard orders are not to give up when you're approached by enemy ships, is it? It's to fight your way out of a situation. It's to call in backup. What happened? There was no call back to the aircraft carrier, they say. Do you believe that story? I don't. No. That is why they've got us looking at that story rather than the main thing was. So they're making these young kids the fall guy for what this evil, backstabbing administration is doing. Maybe they did call in for backup and for help. And maybe the captain of the mothership, so to speak, was told not to send any backup. Maybe that's the real story. It's like Benghazi all over again. And I'll go on record right now. We have another Benghazi under the cafe singer in the White House. He did it again. It's another Benghazi. Only this time nobody was killed, thank God. I wouldn't have been surprised if they all got killed by Iran. That would not have been it. They made them bow down. They took our woman in a combat thing and dressed her in a monkey suit. It's disgraceful. This man should be impeached. End of conversation. Yes, sir. You're getting a copy of Government Zero because of all people on Earth, you know exactly what's going on. His main point is the boat story was a ruse by the shyster in the White House to cover the prisoner release from Gitmo. The whole thing stinks to high heaven. If we had a legitimate press, they'd be investigating this from top to bottom. Instead, they're talking about uh, the Cruz's eligibility, uh, Trump's hairdo, right? 855-407-282, phone number, michaelsavage.com website. I have no mats to sell you, no undershirts, no products, nothing, nothing with my name on it. 
except uh, government 